All right, let's talk mood tracker this week. Love to do it, do it most weeks. And boy, do we have some very interesting stops to make. Let's stop at Texas first. This is just taking the temperature of fan bases and Texas temperature, we got to take it very often. Like when I go into the office at 24 seven, I have to dial into a digital nurse and I have to take my temperature to make sure I'm okay to go in the building. Well, that's like Texas, man. We've had to check on them every week. So I have their new mood as it's not me, it's you. This is a line from Michael Scott in the office. I just want to tell you, Jan, it's not me, it's you. Well, this is Texas. A Texas fan looks at it and says, wait a second. You asked me to invest emotionally. I do it. You asked me to invest financially. Boy, do I do it. Horns up, baby. You asked me to show up to games when it's legal. I do it. You ask me to care about the team, follow it 24-7, 365. And I do all that. And yet I'm not getting a return on my investment. And you now have a head coach that if I'm a Texas fan, I feel has not properly instilled a culture that shows respect to the traditions of this university. And there's a lot of underlying drama going on with that out there. Watch our term Herman video for term Herman, our Tom Herman, Herman. We're going to try it again. Our Tom Herman video and Texas video from Tuesday. And we talked all about that. And I feel that way. So it's not me. I'm not the problem. Everyone criticizes Texas fans sometimes for being too, too involved and too clingy and too emotional. No, 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 no. That's not my problem. It's you, Tom Herman. It's you. So until we make a change out here and until we get a guy in that I can fully support and I can fully buy into, then I'm not going to shoulder any of this blame. Maybe sometimes I care too much. Maybe I love my program to death, but that's not the case right now. It's not me. It's you. At Ohio State, they haven't played a game yet. Why are they on the mood tracker? They are a caged animal. A lot of animal metaphors on the show tonight. Ohio State is a caged animal. Can you imagine, first off, being told you weren't going to play football? Then, oh, there are rumors we're going to. And then, oh, nope, quell the rumors. And then, hey, there's traction after all. And then, you're going to be able to play. And so, oh, great. All right, well, we're going to start a little bit later, but we're still going to be able to play. And then you watch the rest of the sport. And you watch some of these teams like Oklahoma or Texas who are supposed to be good and they're – they're jacking around out there in the Big 12, and they can't get out of their own way in some cases. Then you watch Alabama, and they're getting shredded. And then you watch Clemson, and they're running up and down the field in Miami, more on Miami in a second. But at the same time, like that's not legitimate competition like Ohio State would present. And you're sitting there thinking to yourself, we're going to be the class of this sport. If they finally let us play, we are going to be the class of this sport. Just let us play. And that is exactly what a caged animal is like. Ohio State fans, they just want to be let out of the cage. And we don't really care. In Columbus, Ohio, we don't care if the rest of this conference is ready. Because in our minds, we were going to run roughshod over you either way. We're ready to go to the playoffs. And first, we got to play a Big Ten schedule. Then we got to go to Indianapolis, and we'll check those boxes like we always do. And then it's going to be playoff time. But you're a caged animal right now. Uh, in a good way, of course, if you're Ohio State. How about Tennessee? Tennessee got to be in introspective mode right now. You thought some things about yourself. The mirror may have lied to you just a little bit. So you go to George and you think you got the offensive line to really stand up and give the Bulldogs a four-quarter fight. And instead, that's not the case. Minus one yards rushing when accounting, of course, for quarterback sack yardage total. Either way, it was just a bad total. So at no point could Tennessee really control the game there. And you were shown still that there was a pretty vast roster difference between you and your folks down there in Athens. But here's the difference. This has been known to derail teams before. If you have a championship culture being installed at Tennessee, you'll know it this week because they'll get right back off the map. You got, you got Bama coming in in two weeks. You, you got George in the rear view, but it's task at hand, nameless, faceless opponent. That's how all the big boys do it. That's why you see remarkable consistency week to week from teams that ultimately win championships because that's how their players think. They've had it put in their minds by proper leadership. So, hey, I'm not, I'm not telling you, Jeremy Pruitt's not that. I am openly saying let's watch for indicators as to whether that's where we're headed at Tennessee. So you're introspective and you're kind of hurt. You're licking your wounds a little bit this week, but there's no buy. There's no UT Chattanooga. Uh, not that that would be a, a great escape judging in, by past history, but you got Kentucky. Take care of business against Kentucky. If you do that, it's not like it erases Georgia, but what you finally do is you finally look at yourself saying, okay, you know what? We're beating the teams we're supposed to beat. We weren't supposed to beat Georgia yet. It would have been nice. It would have been an upset. But now we got this program where we're beating the teams we're supposed to beat. Um, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Because if you're doing that alone, you're already elevating your program far above most of the sport. And then you can worry about early signing day. And then you can start worrying about knocking off some of the big boys down the road. Right now, it's just introspective time. 
had some things we thought about ourselves. Maybe they weren't all true, but we could be a lot better still than we used to be. We think we are. We got to find it out. Let's wrap up with Miami. So close, yet so far. That's what it's got to feel like when you watch your team open against UAB. Solid performance. You go to Louisville and up and down the field on the Cardinals. And then you just smoke Florida State like pretty much anyone this side of Florida high school teams has been doing. But yet you still do it. You take care of business. You think to yourself, here we go. We're going to Clemson. We're going to be able to find out. And we think we can be competitive there. Bug on a windshield. Bug on a windshield. You know, it feels a lot like probably Tennessee felt like when they went to Georgia. And it's a setback. Mentally, it's just a setback. When you felt like you were closer then the product and the result on the field showed you that you are. But it's the same way as Miami is, as it is with Tennessee. I mean, it's there's a huge difference between, oh, we're not elite yet, and, oh, we're the same as we used to be. No, you're not. No, you're not at all. I don't think that about Miami. I don't think that about Tennessee. And so, so close yet so far away. Well, that's what I say about Miami right now. But yet you're also far away from where you used to be. And I'm not just talking about record, like they haven't even put up a record for the end of this year yet. I'm talking about where the caliber of the program is and where their standing is right now. And if I'm wrong about that, I'm wrong about that. But I think they've made progress. If you're looking at it as if you're climbing a ladder, top rung is still several steps away. But you're several steps above that bottom rung now, too. So for Miami, so close, yet so far.